Welcome back to episode 28 of my Minnesota Wild save on Eastside Hockey Manager and the 1998-1999 rosters from uh, the Blue Line, who did a great job. Um, today it is the final league game of the season, and we play the Stars. Now, you'll notice, is it the Stars or the Sharks? The Stars. You'll notice that we sit five points above the Stars. You will also notice we sit four points above the Kings. So we've locked a playoff spot. And we could jump up into the spot above the Mighty Ducks. And that would be pretty nice. I'd be happy with that. And that would mean, I guess, we get the Flames, which I'd be fine with. As you'll see in our form box. I don't want to turn my phone off because I swear I never get messages. Each side hockey manager just draws messages out. It's trying to distract me. Uh, you look at our form, though. We are the form team. Now, the the interesting thing about that is... Check out this image, which I'll throw on in the editing. Yeah. Now, look at our form there. We recently went on a 10-win 10, 10 streak. So, let me show you what's happened since the last time you were with me which was the New York Rangers game, which we won. Now, that was the third in a win streak of five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then a shootout loss, so we got a point out of that one. Then another two wins. So, we, um, we got 12 wins out of 13 and a shootout loss in one of them. So, we got 25 points out of a possible 26. And we're still not that far ahead into the playoffs. So it shows you it's been a pretty rough race. But today we play the Dallas Stars. This will be the last game. And then I'll do a little roundup of the season. And then a preview of the first playoff series. So let's just go into that. Let me show you the tactics. Uh, Miller is still injured. He'll be out for a while. I don't think he'll be back in for the playoffs at all. So this is what we're going with. The, the top line is a beast. Malone is just an absolute tank. And I... Uh, He's 42 points. I've been going on about him so much. I actually Googled him. So he likes his cocaine. But other than that, I'm sure he's a great guy. So I still love him on this game. I'm, I'll am i be a fan forever because of this. So, And he's playing again this year. So I don't know what happened with that. But st it, yeah, still rocking it for the, for the Minnesota Wild. So, okay. And who else is injured? Hyvok's injured, which is why he's not in there. He's been on very good form. There's five there, but an average of 8.05 in his last five. So, uh, ooh, Holzing is playing very badly. So, I think we get how Where's Holzinger playing? Third line. I think we get Halpin in there. I hadn't spotted how badly Holzinger was doing. So, let's go ahead and do that. In fact, what does they reckon there? Okay, Halpern. Uh, sure, that fourth line does fine. That's what we're going to go with for today. Uh, yep, that's fine. Let's go for this game against the Stars, which only we can only move up, so that's, that's a good place to be. Here we go then. On the breakaway, they shoot from, from the neutral zone, which is a weird thing on this game, that they show that as, as, as good a chance as you know a breakaway. Very bizarre behaviour. It's going to be a penalty call here. They shot again, basically from the from the point, but with no men in front of them. So that's very weird. And Smith puts the puck over the uh, over the glass, which is not ideal. Yeah. So looking at it, we lost the game before the last one, which we beat the the Sharks in. But I think we must be the about the best form team in the league, and everyone's kind of firing. So. I don't know what our chances are in the playoffs, but I kind of, I kind of suspect we might be okay. We might get through a couple of rounds here, maybe even, maybe even take it all the way. I don't know. Let's not get crazy. But if all of these guys show up, then I just, you just don't know. We could win the cup this year. Who knows? Um, we're going to have some issues in the off season, but if we win, maybe we'll be able to convince people to stay on a bit easier. That would be nice. Hatcher takes two minutes for cross-checking. And we go on the power play. 
Hatcher. Hatcher. Hatcher, Hatcher, hang on. Darian Hatcher. He's got some just excellent hair. He looks a bit rough in terms of his attributes, not his face. High hitting, high checking. Probably uh, sort of rough him up defenseman a bit, maybe. Uh, but he looks okay. I just thought, I just saw Hatcher and thought, they have Hatcher, and that's uh, quite good. But I remember he's he's on the Sabres, is he, or somewhere? The, I mean, the penalty's gone, and that was a fairly dull first period. The only highlights they really showed us were shots from the neutral zone or the point. Did they go for a change there? What happened? Malone plays it to Sedin. Just give it to Malone. He's basically the man. So he's all hopped up. Um, Cider takes two minutes for cross checking. So we go on the power play again. Oh, I'm quite excited about this game now. I think we've got a chance, and I, I'm trying to work out the next steps, who we can pick up. I have noticed though that Malone has been has grown throughout the season. And he's significantly better now. Oh, that looks like a real bad miss from Turgeon, actually. Uh, he's significantly better now than he was... When was that? You know, the start of the year or whatever. We're on the power play. I didn't even notice. It's gone, though. And uh, I heard that the best way to help people grow was to let them play in the minors and all that stuff. And they're going to score here. Yeah, they do. Hull from Madano. A bad giveaway in our zone. That's for Hull's 25th goal of the year. Uh, yeah, I heard that we you, they grown better when you let them just play in the AHL or in the college systems, or whatever. That was a really dull game, and they won up from a from a turnover. So, and we turned the puck over again, and they almost punished us, but Nabokov managed to hold them out. Um, yeah, I, I now think maybe we should sign we sign the players and give them giving them NHL time. Maybe I should be using uh, Hartnell on that fourth line. Maybe the um, uh, maybe Avery needs to be getting some time. If they want to get to five stars, which I obviously want them to, then maybe I need to be giving them that bit of time. We're, we're not creating much here. Again, that's a shot from center ice, so I don't know why they showed me that. So I'm actually going to go uh, very offensive. Uh, a regular amount of offensive. And then in a few minutes, we'll go to very offensive. If there's five minutes left and we still haven't scored, we'll go to that. That's an icing for our guys. And the point out there with Turgeon and Yaga is a weird combination. But okay. And they have a shot from the point, but nothing really there. This has been a really dull one. Not the uh, not the excitement that you want, maybe, for the end of the season. But, you know, all this means is we finish sixth in the conference and, and we're in a playoff spot either way. So... Uh, it, means the, it means the stars are in there, and we could eventually come up against them. We've gone very offensive, but we're not really doing much, and that was an offside. They were able to clear the puck out of the zone, but we claim it in our behind our own net. Yaga with a dangerous pass, but Turgeon plays it out left to Sanderson, who doesn't really use that speed. Or is it holding it that's got the speed? I don't remember. They Those two I get mixed up all the time, and I don't know why, because they haven't even got similar names. Malone. That's the man, though. Give it back to him. Oh, I thought he was going back to Malone to be the uh, the game-tying hero with 30 seconds left. Is it... Is it pull the goalie time? Pull goalie. Yeah! Pull the goalie! You never pull the goalie. Come on, boys. Let's get it done. Oh, they're going to score. They did. They scored. Letting in from Hull and Cider. But, you know, we go for it. it. We still get a playoff spot, so it doesn't really matter too much. Nabokov goes back in. It's a shame to lose that one. That would have been good to go in with as good a record as possible, really. Still not awful, but that will be a loss. And that obviously puts a stop. Actually, that might have been bad for the point totals. You see, look at this, so. I say this every episode, but even when he doesn't get points, Yaga is pretty good. And Nabokov played a nine, which is good to go into the playoffs with. You want your goalie on a good form. You want him to be the hot hand because you're going to rely on him in every game, basically. 
unless he gets injured, he's going to play every game. So let's do a little season wrap up. Is there anything else? Stars and the Sharks qualify. Who do we get? Devils, Leafs, Sabres, Canadians, Capitals, Senators, Flyers, Rangers, Coyotes, Sharks. Is that first against eighth? Red Wings, Stars. The Wild will play the Avalanche, which is a team we beat last year, I believe, right? In seven. Uh, third, third seed, Colorado. Sixth seed, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, they clinched the series 4-1 in the regular season, apparently, but we beat them in seven last year, so no reason why not, although they did have a significantly weakened team, which they don't seem to have this year. Alex Tange is really on it, although he's he must be injury prone. What is he? Not injury prone, apparently, but he, he doesn't seem to play a full season, really, which is a real shame for them. He has he was down on his points from last year. What about Joe Sackick? This, this will serve as our playoff preview. Let me just talk you through who we're playing. Basically, that's all I want to do. Joe Sackick, obviously very, very good. Uh, plus 46 is outstanding. Anybody else? Hey Duke looks excellent. I mean, let's not forget about Patrick Waugh, who put up a 0 0.908, which is good. It's better than, I mean, he's looking a little bit older. The poke check and the stick handling of, I think, although well, they might have been there before, to be honest with you. But then he's looking a little bit, a little bit older, a little bit long in the tooth at 36. Uh, Deb Marsh, I recognize that name. Adam Deb Marsh, 72 points. They've got a lot of point scorers. So let's have a look at. There's, it's, it's gone to uh, regular season. There you go. 84 points for Sakic. Deb Marsh, 72. Smolinski with 70. Tango with 66, but only 61 games. Ozelins did very, very well for a defenseman. Very well for a defenseman, actually. 54 points. He looks excellent. And a very good contract as well. Really excellent. And that's a down year for him as well. Look at that. He's he's a real good point producer. Uh, Kamensky. They've got some good point scorers here. They look like they're a dangerous team. We've beaten them before. So, was that that they didn't have Tange? I mean, they finished third in the conference with 110 points. Seven points clear of us. Four more wins. So, let's have a look at the... Uh, that was your playoff. In, I, I don't have anything more to say about the playoffs than that. Let's have a look at the trio real quick. This is always backwards. I think if we win, we play these guys, right? No. If we win, we play these guys. And these guys play these guys, I think. First plays... I don't know. Uh, hang on. Yeah, no, it won't be that. It'll be... First against eighth now, and I, I don't know. I can't remember because it's much more. It's, it seems more complicated than just the divisional system because there's there's more divisions. So I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with that. That will be a thing that I discover. Um. So obviously the, that's the wrong one. I'm all over the shop here. The Devils won out the season by a long way. They look excellent. 60 wins is outstanding. Um, I will say, by the way, that uh, Luongo has been pretty crazy good for the Sabres since he went. Uh, yeah, he's, he looks good. He looks very, very good. The Devils look excellent. So we play the fifth overall Avalanche, and we are the 13th overall. Uh, the Bruins, bless him, finished 15th, 101 points, and didn't make the playoffs of 47 wins. That feels harsh. That feels really harsh, actually. 47 wins and make the playoffs. Wow. Um, let's go through. Let's go through. Obviously, pa Pavel Bore is just an absolute animal. So, Tamu Solani, though, really picked up 54 goals. Now, you'll spot. Wow, that is so disappointing. You'll spot the Yarami Yaga. If he'd have got a point in that last game. He would have been a point per game for the entire season, having played 82 games. Instead, he has 81 points with 47 goals. But he was a plus 20, shot a really good percentage, 
8.13 average is so good. It's so good. I was expecting good things from him this year, and I know that he didn't produce points like he did in these seasons back here. But, man, I don't know. I mean, 7.9. If I'd have got that out of him for a full season, I'd have been so happy. 8.13 is madness. Let's go through uh, the points anyway. Is there any really surprising ones? Patrick Eliash is up there. Lindros, Shanahan. Shanahan's attributes, he's very well-rounded without really looking incredible anywhere. So I'm always surprised to see him up there. Todd Marchant. I don't know much about Todd Marchant. What did he do last year? 81 points. He was a point per game. So I must have just not been paying attention. Satan, after his move, actually might have improved on his points. He was below a point per game before he moved, and he picked it up big style, 36 in 24. That's 1.5 points a game, which actually would have been good for the whole league lead. Now, let me go real quick to defenseman. Lidstrom, 69. Kevin Hatcher, two defensemen above 60 points is excellent for the Detroit Red Wings. That is a scary prospect because, I mean, we might have to come up against them pretty soon. And for their defenseman to be up there like that is is impressive. Uh, you can take a look at any of these guys. Vishnovsky actually got 54 points in the end, which was not as good as the season before, but a better uh, plus minus, which I know isn't a great measure of anything, but, you know, he was... He was on stronger lines, like a stronger line this year, generally, even though he didn't get as many points. And he got the same average rating, so that's a good sign. And Rafalski also, 49 points. Really good, and that's a big step up for him. He was, he's was he been a very, very, very good signing, actually. Uh, I was told that he would be when I originally agreed to sign him. And he's been excellent. He's been really good. Let's go goalies. Uh, Nabokov, 23rd in the... Which category are we ordered by right now? Save percentage, is it? He's 20... 24th by save percentage. Yeesh. That's not great, is it? Oh, he's 24th, but to be fair, there are one, two, three, four guys there who haven't played even 10 games. There's a couple of guys here who have played less than 40... I count those as backups. Well, that is definitely a backup. That's Tim Thomas. So they split basically all the games between them, Brodor and Thomas. And they were both outstanding. But to only have Brodor on 43 games feels absolutely bizarre, considering who he is. Tim Thomas is actually expiring. That's going to be a big pickup for a team, to be honest. Look at the, the save percentage. is excellent. I'd consider that, you know, if I could get him for a good deal. Of the Devils, yeah. Make a deal with the Devil. Um, speaking of which, the Rangers in real life actually did just make a deal with the Devils, which is bizarre, because that's... If you don't know, that's literally the first time that's ever happened. Um, Michael Grabner, I'm talking about there. I'm, I'm recording this on Friday. That happened yesterday, I think. Um, so he did okay. What about the average rating? Because, to be honest, the goals, the save percentage is good, but the average rating, he's even worse down there, to be honest. But then again, there's a lot of guys here, as I say, that are probably backup goalies. So I would say, um, yeah, he's sort of up there in the around the 25 mark on both of those stats, I'd say. Um, Brodeur and Thomas. Thomas has got to be the hot property in the, in the market this year. He really has. He needs a qualifying offer. They'll give him that for sure. But he looks very well-rounded and very, very good. Then uh, if we filter by... Oh, rookies. How about rookies? Pavel Datsyuk. Ryan Malone, there he is, 42 points, second on the rookie list. Uh, Pavel Datsyuk, his, uh, his technical attributes are just ridiculous. But physically and mentally, he's not all there. That sounds, that sounds rude. He's not anywhere near as good. But he still looks excellent. Duncan Keith up there, actually, is a, would be an outstanding pickup at 18 to get 37 points. It's pretty, pretty succulent. Where did the um, Canucks finish? They didn't even get close to a playoff. They were 30 points down. So that, on a bad team, 
to get that many points for a defenseman is really good anyway. As an 18-year-old rookie, he I mean, we know who he is. We know how good he is. But that, he looks like he could be unbelievably good, to be honest with you. Mike Kalmaneri in there as well for the Islanders. That's interesting. Don't know why it's interesting, but it is to me. Koivu, there's a lot of uh, recognisable names. Rafi Torres, I just, no. 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 Uh, uh, no. Um, Brendel looks pretty good, other than his speed. He looks very, very good. Uh, his flares. His flares not ideal. He looks like he could turn into a good player, though. I'll be really interested to just very, very quick to check out... No, I can't do it. I wanted to check out Koval. I'll just search him. I'll just do a search. Ilya. Ilya Kovalchuk. He looks pretty good. Do you know who I really want, though, right now? Oh. Oh, hang on. Here he is. How old is he? 16. I mean, I'd, I'd snap him up into my team right now. What a beast. And also, just putting this out there, as he would get into my team, and he... And he's 14. And he'd get into my team quite easily. And he would have done for about two years. He's just ridiculous. Um, anything else I need to show you from the league? Player statistics. Let's go team statistics real quick. Last 10 games we have dropped down, but we're still fourth on that list. And only none. None of those teams, right? None of the teams above us in that form standings are in our conference. The Red Wings sit the same. We don't have to deal with them just yet. So this is looking this is looking okay. Uh, the Devils won nine in a row, which is outrageous. And playoff player stats, anything else I need to show you. Let me really quickly run through our team. How long have I been recording this video for? 20 minutes. I mean, it's, it's a long video considering there's only one game, but I don't mind too much. Let me go scope regular season. What the hell's a play out? I don't know what that is. Right, regular season. Yaramir Yaga, 81 points. We've spoken about him. Sanderson was 79. Uh, he, I mean, 37 goals. Is That might not be as good as his previous year, but it's certainly it's as good as the year before, actually. Yeah, it's very, very good. But he's certainly got more points as well. Pierre Turgeon was a point per game or got injured for three games. He's not as good a performer as Yaga. But he is a, as good a point producer and a very important on that line with those those two. Obviously, you can see from Sanderson's increased production that these guys are important. Done a good job. Point per game, just. Which is amazing, to be honest with you. That this line's been so good. Yet the guy, I mean, our main guy, in terms of point production over the last few years for the other team, has actually dropped off in points. So, I don't really know what's going on there. See, then that drops off quite significantly where... Sedin got 46 in 81 games. His average rating is so bad, though. Um, and Malone rocked up there. Hlavik actually would be excellent to have back in right now. He's listed day-to-day. -day. Wow, his attributes have dropped off. I think it's because he's been injured, maybe. He's only played 64 games, which is not that bad. But 40 points, he's done really well. It's just a shame that he's um, he's been injured. He's someone who's quite important to our team, actually. When's his contract out? He's got another year on 1.1 million. I mean, I wish his stats hadn't gone down. Uh, average rating, let's look real quick. I mean, anything above a 7, I think, is pretty good. 6.7 up is average. Below that is not great. So Holzinger actually has been awful. I had it in my head that he'd been pretty good. Maybe it's because he was good last year. 49 points last year and the year before, 45. What's his contract like? He's got another year. Uh, someone I wouldn't be against trading. Uh, I've actually signed Paulson again to another deal because I think, worst case scenario, I get good value for him. So he's up there. Uh, yeah, that's not, it's not been too bad a season. It's good. It's not as much progress as I thought we might make, especially considering the signings, but it's been okay. 
And I still think we might be all right here, you know, in this playoff series. The other thing is, yeah, as I said, I might be looking at bringing up, no matter what, putting Hartnell up there, maybe on the third line on the uh, NHL team with Malone on the second, something like that. I uh, might be looking at bringing in Stemniak. Is someone I'm definitely thinking about bringing in because he just, even though it's in the college system, he's putting up bare points. He looks succulent and he's super quick. Good with most of the stats you need. Good pass, good wrist shot, decent flair, decent, cre okay creativity and great speed. So he should be someone that can cause anyone any defense issues. He's someone I think I'm definitely going to bring up and try and maximize that potential. Currently sits at three star. The only reason I left him down is because I thought he might get pushed out of the lines. But if he performs well, then I'll bring him in. Uh, Glumac, I actually might bring up. He's been pretty good in the AHL, with a good, good average rating, so I wouldn't be against that. I will do an outline of all of our prospects and stuff at another point, but um, yeah, Avery looks like a fourth line guy, for sure, at best, I think. Hopefully he grows. His, attribute, his um, technical stats need to grow big style, which is a shame, but understandable. Who else have we got that's got good value? Uh, Freddie Meyer, unfortunately, his future uh, ratings just completely dropped. And also his point production seems to have dropped off as well. Oh, he's changed league. Yeah, okay, he's changed league. That makes sense. It's not too bad. But his, his, his potential's sort of fallen off, so... I'm a bit hesitant about him now, but we'll see. Justin Williams also just, I don't understand him. I don't really know what he's doing. I'm going to scout him again because I, uh, I don't want to let his um, his rights run out if he's going to get good and become Mr. Game 7 like he is in real life or was in real life. But if he's, if he's going to be one star, I don't want to give him a contract. So. so we are playing in the next episode, we will be playing the Colorado Avalanche. If you haven't been here for a playoff series before, uh, if you're new to the series, that is, I guess, or if you have been before, but you can't remember how I do this, for playoff series, I will bring you in and show you the game for every possible elimination game. So that could be one, and we could get swept four or nothing, which would be a bit of a nightmare, or it could be games four, five, six, and seven. So it could be a real long episode, could be really short, so I hope you'll join me for that. I think they're the they're the most exciting episodes of the series of this series. Uh, I do enjoy the drafts as well, I must say. But that's going to be coming up pretty shortly. I'm going to record that right now, and I mean, if we go to the Stanley Cup, I'll be ab I'll be about to record four episodes in a row, or five, including this one. So this series the episodes are going to come thick and fast in the next week. Which is great because it's been a couple of weeks of it being really slow. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.